of Heracor Vets out of Houston, Texas. In the far lane, Rick Kelly, Pete Smith in the near lane. He got four tenths of a second head start. Track, Dave Benesek of Hacienda Heights, California, in a 1972 Buick, was ready to take on George Hall of Glenville, Michigan, in a 71 Buick. At the lights, it's Dave Benesek, stock eliminator world champion, with the national records of 13.56 ET and 101.84 top end speed. This drag racing business isn't just for men. There were two women who qualified for the world finals, but they weren't destined for a showdown against each other as Judy Lilly of Golden, Colorado was in the super stock class and Shea Nichols of Abilene, Texas was running in pro stock. Judy's 68 Plymouth brought her from regional competition where she did well enough to collect the necessary points to make a repeat performance at the world finals. As a wife and a mother, Judy makes the drag racing a family sport and is earnest about working for a win every time out. Judy was denied the chance at the finals in the Superstock when Dave Bortman of Muskegon, Michigan in a 72 Dodge and Larry Nelson of West Lafayette, Indiana in a 55 Chevy brushed aside all comers to meet each other in the final running for the title. Taking the win with the national record elapsed time of 12.20 seconds was Dave Bortman. Indicative of the dedication, color, and enthusiasm of drag racing contestants is Ray Murphy of Ames, Iowa, who drives plum nuts in the modified production class. Murphy and mechanic T.J. McDonald express their feelings about the World Finals in Amarillo. What do you think about the World Finals in Amarillo, and how long have you been here? Uh, we came in Tuesday. Uh, decided to take off a little early and come down where it was warm, which didn't quite turn out that way, but uh, decided to take a little vacation and... and uh, Really enjoying ourselves. Uh, the reception we had was great. It's, we've traveled all over the country, uh, especially this year, and this is the greatest place. People are wonderful. Good. How does it look for the competition in the races today? It's going to be tough. We're not even sure we're qualified right now. We were second earlier yesterday afternoon, and now we're up to sixth before this last pass, so we don't know exactly where we stand. It's going to be tough, though. It's a rough road up to the top, isn't it? You better believe it. <laughs> Okay, Ray, TJ, thank you very much. You bet, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. In the modified eliminator final race, the Blevins and Izakowski Corvette from Freehold, New Jersey, was ready to meet Joe Williamson of Louisville, Kentucky. This was the big race of the day for the modified eliminators, the culmination of months of work and thousands of miles of traveling. Williamson was a split second too fast in getting off the starting line, a foul giving the race to Paul Blevins, who set a national record lapse time of 10.55 for D-Alter. Tom Trish of Rockford, Illinois, the defending competition champion, the big winner in 1971, was back again to try for another championship. Tom, this is your second trip to the World Finals, your second trip to Amarillo. What type of uh, problems do you encounter in racing here? Well, the uh, atmosphere at Amarillo is uh, different than any other track that we raced in in the Midwest, where we're from. Uh, the altitude is quite a bit higher than, uh, than what we're used to, and there's always a problem in the first couple of runs to get the car to work properly. Uh, this... Uh, this uh, season here with the rain, uh, the time has been cut down that we've had times to run in. So, and it, and it, uh, everything's been pushed into one or two days here, and we're having quite a bit of trouble with our personal car trying to get the motor to the right position so it's uh, have its maximum horsepower. Now you were one of the big winners in the World Finals last year. How does your uh, competition and the uh, chances stack up for this year? Well, it's rougher. Every year it gets rougher. It's hard to, to <coughs> maintain a, oh, a steady pace, let's say, because uh, Records change and uh, cars get fast, somebody gets slower, and it just, it just changes all the time. This year it's rougher than last year, by far. This time, though, Trish didn't make it, as he was beaten out by Roy Rastetter's D. Altered, who was to see action in the final race. Wayne McMurtry of Pueblo, Colorado, and Roy Rastetter of Hale Center, Texas, had the top two competition cars. met in the final round, it was McMurtry's double B dragster covering the course in 7.56 seconds to outdo Rastetter's A altered eight and a half seconds. There are 
eight NHRA national events here in 1974, offering more than a million dollars in prize money, and there are eight different classes competing in them, recapping some of the other results now in the stock class. Les Young of Medford, Oregon, with a great hole shot, got his second straight title, beating Dick Zugman of Tustin, California. That was in the stock class. In the super stock competition, it was Marcel Pottier of Placentia, California. Again, a great start to defeat Dave Wren of Linwood, Washington. He jumped off the line like Dave was tied to a post and won it. And the modified eliminator, Lee Shepard of Arlington, Texas, was the man who had the whole shot to defeat Jim Marshall of Riverside, California. And in the competition eliminator, Ron Bonfanti of Metairie, Louisiana, 8.50, defeated Phil Featherston of Stockton, California. Featherston across at 8.92 elapsed time. Fairly exotic folks running around here at the NHRA Winter Nationals. Now we come to the finals of the Pro Comp. Dale Armstrong of Torrance, California, and his partner, Ken Beeney. They'll be squaring off against each other. These automobiles were prepared in the same shop. Dale Armstrong is driving an A fuel dragster, and Ken Beeney is in a double B funny car. Now, this is a new category, the Pro Comp, determined on weight, fuel, and the displacement of the engines, and, of course, their placement in this particular professional category, which is head-to-head -head racing, is determined by how well they have performed. Buster Couch brings them up now. Their partners running for the top money here in the Pro Comps, and the money will run right around $8,000 for the winner. Armstrong in the power lane. Here is the camera. Good start. Armstrong has the lead at the top end. It is Armstrong. 6.89 seconds, 196.5 miles an hour. Vaney, 7.09 in his funny car, also 19650 miles an hour. Take another look at the finish in slow motion. Now you see Armstrong in the dragster, closest to the camera. Vaney in the funny car. An exciting new category, Pro Comp. And Dave, let's talk about that while we're watching the first racer stage. This is a new category for 1974, Ted, and it uh, matches up all types of cars. Here we see Wayne Ernst, and apparently he's having some problems as he's looking at his crew, and he doesn't look very happy, and taking off his fire gloves, you can figure there's something wrong. He drives what's known as an A-fuel dragster. It is an injected engine using nitromethane. His competition, who has the single run, is Dave Mack. He drives a gas-burning dragster, but is supercharged. They are handicapped on the basis of weight, engine size, and the type of fuel used. So you see all different types of cars. We'll be seeing matchups between dragsters and funny cars, supercharged cars against injected cars, and it really has provided some of the greatest racing seen yet in 1974. In our second matchup, Ron Boggs in a double B funny car. He'll be going against Don Girardot in a double A dragster. Right, the double B funny car designation indicates that it is burning alcohol instead of its big brother that uses nitromethane, such as you saw a moment ago with Don Prudhomme and Tom McEwen and the like. And a good race, a good close one at 7.22 for Boggs, a winning time, 194 miles an hour. And now remember, that car is running on alcohol. It is very similar, almost, in fact, it is identical to the nitro burning cars. The only difference is the type of fuel used. You see how close the racing is. Here is Ron Boggs in the funny car, about a half a car length ahead of Don Gerardo, and Gerardo just <laughs> almost caught him at that finish line point. Jim Scott, a double-A dragster, in the right lane, going against Dale Hall, who will be in the left lane. He's driving what we call a B-fuel dragster, Dale Hall. That is the conventional front-engine style dragster using an injected small-block Chevrolet engine using nitromethane for fuel. Jimmy Scott, the winningest driver thus far in Pro Comp, driving the supercharged dragster of Al Weiss from Canoga Park, California, on gasoline. Let's see how close this one is. Uh, another close one. 7.16 for Jim Scott, the winning time. 189 miles an hour. 7.32 the losing effort. 187 miles an hour. The handicapping system here by using the engine displacement, the car weight, and the type of fuel used has worked out very well. Here we see a supercharged engine against an injected one, and less than five feet separating them at the finish mm -hmm. line. Ken Vini in the right lane going against Jeg Coughlin, both driving double B funny cars. Jeg Coughlin is from Columbus, Ohio. He is driving a car powered by the late model Hemi. Vini's Vega is obviously a Chevrolet Vega that is really brought down low to the ground, trying to cheat the wind as much as possible. It uses a Chevrolet engine, both cars powered by alcohol. 
We have free stage. Should be an exciting race and uh, staged and Coughlin almost loses it, swirling down the track. Back off when he uh, saw he was having some difficulty. Coughlin doing a great job of keeping that car from going into the guardrail because uh, with that fiberglass body, while he is protected very well, and you can see right here, he heads right straight for it and just almost clips it with the tail of the car. The car swinging around now and starting to go into a skid, swings the other direction. He brings it under control. And Jake Coughlin of Columbus doing a masterful driving job as Ken Veeney streaks onto a win at 7.30 seconds. That's the quarterfinal round of Pro Comp. And this is competition in the Superstock category, one of the more popular events as Ronnie Sirianni does a burnout. He'll be going against Butch Leal. Leal in the left lane, Sirianni in the right lane. Ted, Superstock racing is just what it implies. They are souped up stock type cars, similar to those that you see driven on the street. Here is Butch Leal in the 65 Plymouth, the Chevy Camaro of Bennett and Sirianni. They operate on a handicap basis where the slower car gets a physical head start. You see the tree counting down unequally there. And the Camaro with the lead over Butch Leal. This is where the catch up comes into drag racing. And Butch Leal trying to catch him. Can he do it? The finish line shows he did just barely. His time, 10.63 for Butch Leal to an 11.28 for Ronnie Sirianni. The handicap given to Ronnie Sirianni is based on the national record for the class car he is running. One thing about drag racing, there is something there for everybody, regardless of what type of car you like to drive, whether you would be a top fuel dragster or a super stocker, NHRA style drag racing has something for everybody. And here is the by run. There were an unequal number of cars in this round. So Bobby Warren from Clinton, North Carolina, getting a single run. Each car must make the same number of runs as his competitor. One of the real fun categories is the modified. And everybody dreams, I think, at one time or another of having the old roadster. Certainly do. And this is where the roadsters, the coupes, the sedans, they all reside. It used to be in the earlier days of drag racing that the 32 Ford just dominated these classes. But right now, it's the more modern vehicles. Here we see the Chevy Corvette of Jerry Alt coming at us in the right-hand lane, looking at the cars. Paul Schley with the Volkswagen from Santa Ana, California, losing on that run to Alt. Alt at an 11-12. He's from Dayton, Ohio. Losing time for Schley in 11.24. You can see they were very closely matched as they left the starting line. And it's hard to believe that that Volkswagen is competing almost on a heads-up basis, that with a four-cylinder Volkswagen engine to the V8 in the Corvette. And here's the Roadster, uh, perhaps I was thinking about uh, and dreaming about. Uh, it's driven by Joseph DeSantis. He'll be going against uh, Jim Griffin. Griffin in the left lane, DeSantis in the right lane. And there's Joe DeSantis. There. That's right, concentrating on that starting system. The head start, we'll see it count down a tremendous head start for Jim Griffith over the street roadster, and here comes DeSantis. Like you say, everybody dreams about having one of these, but I don't know whether everybody dreams of going 150 miles an hour in one or not. Nine Winning time, 9.28 for DeSantis, 11.27 for Jim Griffin. Car capable of speeds upwards of 150 miles an hour. Jim Griffith with his big head start, still unable to hold off the top end charge of Joe DeSantis and the street roadster, taking the lead as he goes into the traps at the finish line and winning the race. Four categories of competition are represented in sportsman or handicap racing here. Actually, three of them are handicap. One is heads up, sportsman category racing. We're looking now at competition eliminator, and that's right, that is a six-cylinder power dragster. Hard to believe that it would be competitive. It runs speeds upwards of 145 miles an hour. It's racing against a V8 power dragster. Again, the handicap coming into play here. The V8 car is Russ Flagel from Indianapolis, Indiana. John Baines from Louisville, Kentucky, driving the six-cylinder dragster. Here's Flagel with his protective fire suit on, and he is driving the V8 dragster. The head start going to the six-cylinder about a half a second. And it's going to be Russ Flagel, a time of 8.46 to 9.25 for John Baines, a speed of 159 miles an hour. 
Of course, the point here is not only must you be competitive against the guy you're running against, but you also must be able to run fairly close to your record, particularly when you get into NHRA championship competition like this, because the handicap is based on the national record for your class. There we see Russ Flagel taking the win. The next race, there are two bodied cars. This one a late model and the other an early model type. Altered cars, that is the class designation. And they both run the same class, so it will be a heads up race. Dave Weir in the right lane against Bob Riffle. Bob Riffle just running off a quick burnout there. He is from uh, Columbus, Ohio, driving for the Nationwide team. Dave Weir from Spring Valley, New York, and this is literally, Ted, the old versus the new. The old design altered car, that is a Bantam Roadster, against the new Dodge of Bob Riffle, and they're going side by side, and this will be a close one, you can tell right now. Extremely close, and it's uh, Dave Weir, a time of 9.04 to 9.10 for Bob Riffle, a uh, speed of 153 miles an hour. The jubilant uh, reaction of his crewman kind of told you who won <laughs> that race, I think, Ted. Here we see it again in slow motion and stop action, and let's just see how close it really was. Dave Weir in the Bantam Roadster, as you can see, just a wheel length and a little more ahead of Bob Riffle in the altar. Now back to Pro Comp and round three. Dave Mack in the right lane. You're taking a look at him right there against Ron Boggs will be in the left lane. And uh, this is the new category this year. Uh, different cars, different weights, but all matched up uh, for good competition. And these cars run on a heads up basis. The handicapping is done by the weight, the cubic inch, and the type of fuel used, the cubic inch of the engine. Within the cars themselves, no handicap. It is a pro start, one amber, and then a green light. And then they leave, and tremendous racing in this category. And this is why it's so exciting. Dave Mack, a 7.18 the winning time, 187 miles an hour, 7.25 for the losing effort at 191 miles. And this is another close race. The funny car against the dragster, and certainly Pro Comp has proved that uh, cars can be handicapped on this basis, and you can't get much closer than that. I'll tell you, Ted, that is really close. Double A dragster Jim Scott going against Double B funny car Ken Vini. Vini in the left lane, Scott in the right lane. That's a shot of Vini inside his funny car, the protective fire suit and the mask on. And Jimmy Scott, the car that won the Gator Nationals Pro Comp the Sports Nationals, the recent all-sportsman category race. He won that one. He is the winningest pro comp racer in the country today with that double-A gas dragster owned by Al Weiss of Canoga Park. And it's going to be Jim Scott, a time of 714, 189 miles an hour, 743, the losing time, 191 miles an hour. Chuck Poole's Chuck Wagon, an exhibition vehicle here at the 10th Annual NHRA Spring Nationals. Ted, this vehicle is designed, it's a Volkswagen truck, designed to travel the quarter mile on its rear wheels only. You saw the gust of wind catch him and move him from the left lane to the right lane. They're steerable just like any other vehicle. Now let's move to the finals. First of all, the super stock, Bobby Warren of Clinton, North Carolina, a 67 Camaro, against Butch Leal of Northridge, California in his 65 Plymouth, Leal in the left lane. If anybody had to be considered a favorite in any category, it's Butch Leal in Superstock. And there you see Bobby Warren with the head start. But Butch Leal coasting to a stop at the starting line. Obviously, something breaking in the drive line and a tough break for him. Butch Leal, definitely a favorite in Superstock. The winning time for Bobby Warren, 11.44. We'll see it again. And here you see the car coming up and then going nose to the ground. Means something probably let go in the drive line. Bobby Warren of Clinton, North Carolina, recent winner of the Sports National Superstock title, now the Spring Nationals champion. Butch Leal's car being pushed away. That's Leal with his hand on the door there. A very disgusted man right now, very dejected after having come that close and then having something break in the car. Most drivers will say they would rather get beat than have some mechanical failure do them under. In the finals of the Modified Eliminator, this is Joseph DeSantis of Sharpsville, Pennsylvania in his 1923 T-Model Ford. He'll be going against Jerry Alt of Dayton, Ohio in his 63 vet. Alt in the left lane and DeSantis in the right lane. I can assure you that Henry Ford never had any idea that a 23 Ford Roadster, even though it be a fiberglass replica body, would ever be quite in this configuration. 
capable of speeds upwards of 150 miles an hour. DeSantis giving away a big head start to Jerry Ault. And here comes the Roadster. Powered by a late model Hemi engine. It's very close at the finish line. Oh, 9.15, a new oh, national wow. record. 9.15 for Joseph DeSantis. The losing time, 10.99 for Jerry Ault. Let's look at it again. You can see DeSantis changing the gears and the car bouncing on every gear change. And it is very, very close. Going into the first speed trap, you see pulling alongside DeSantis, moving ahead by about three to four feet to take the win over Jerry Alt. Now to the finals of the competition eliminator. And it'll be Dave Weir of Spring Valley, New York. 32 Bantam Austin against Russ Flagle of Indianapolis, Indiana in his Chevrolet. Here we've got the dragster against the altered. This is handicap racing. The head start will be going to the altered car. There you see Dave Weir and the lights counting down in a staggered fashion. Weir with the lead over Russ Flagle. Flagle trying to play catch up from Indianapolis, Indiana, and it's going to be tough. Nine seconds flat for the altered. Here you see the head start to Weir. He drifts towards the right just a little bit, but he straightens it back out, follows right down the center of the lane, defeating Russ Flagle for the second major event in a row. Russ Flagle in the runner-up position in Comp Eliminator. And in the new Pro Comp category, two AA gas dragsters, Dave Mack from Monrovia, Maryland, and from Canoga Park, California, Jimmy Scott driving the Weiss and Scott car, the national record holder, so far been the best in the field. We'll see how it turns out. The Pro Comp Eliminator, the final round, Jim Scott of Canoga Park, California. And he'll be going against Dave Mack of Morovia, Maryland. Both these cars are the same class, Ted. They are both gas dragsters, a little bit different approach. Uh, Scott using Al Weiss's early model Chrysler engine in the right-hand lane, the late Mylodon aluminum engine in Dave Mack's car. Let's watch this. This is close. Oh. 7.23, the winning time to a losing 7.34, a bit off pace for both cars. But Jimmy Scott annexing another national title. He won the Gator Nationals, the Sports Nationals, and now the Spring Nationals. It's on the far lane, the lane away from us. You see Jimmy Scott getting there just a hair breadth before Dave Mack. In the start, it was Al Venus. He took the victory as Larry Peterson in the wagon red lighted. Tough break. Dwight Cox, one in the Superstar. In the Modified, it was Tim McDonald. The Comp Eliminator, the new champion, Bob Riffle. The Pro Comp, Ken Vaney. A full season of racing coming to the line here at Ontario Motor Speedway as we start into the final eliminations for this 1975 World Finals of Drag Racing. We'll start with Stock Eliminator. A total of 43 races were contested around the United States and Canada during 1975. Eight national events, 35 divisional races. These racers in our sportsman category of stock, super stock, modified competition and pro comp competing primarily on a divisional level. Here we see the finalists in Stock Eliminator from Temple City, California, driving for Bob Lambeck, Tim Ekstrand. He's at the wheel of a 74 duster. Jim Waldo from Richland, Washington, says no, the handicap is not correct. Let's try it again and check yourself and make sure you are correct because it's all important to him that the times be accurate, the difference between the two classes. The Ford of Jim Waldo utilizing the four-speed transmission, automatic transmission at the control of Tim Ekstrand. Here you see the handicap being displayed for the drivers. They'll now approach the starting line for the final and the title world champion 1975 on the line between these two drivers in Stock Eliminator. Handicap coming down. Tim Ekstrand will leave first. A good light. And here comes Jim Waldo. Can he catch him?
And your stock eliminator world champ, Tim Ekstrand from Temple City, California, defeating Jim Waldo. The stock eliminator cars, very similar to those you drive on the street every day, certain allowable modifications, but basically stock cars just as they are delivered from the factory. And now here is Super Stock Eliminator. The Corvette of Bernie Agamon. This is the finals from Bayonne, New Jersey, comes Agamon. Paul Rossi with a 68 Plymouth Barracuda from Corona Del Mar. Concentration as both cars staging. And the tree begins its countdown. Bernie Agamon with a head start, trying to hold off that Hemi-powered Plymouth on the top end. He does by a car length. Bernie Agamon from Bayonne, New Jersey, your 1975 world champion here at Ontario. 10.29 seconds is elapsed time. His speed, 130.988 the time for Paul Rossi. This is modified eliminator as we work our way through the categories. Modified meaning just what it says. More modifications to those basic stock type cars. We've gone through stock eliminator, then super stock, now modified. The Chevy Corvette. Lee Shepard, the Rare and Morrison team from Arlington, Texas, against Bruce Sizemore and the Ford Pinto. The Pinto powered by the six-cylinder engine, the quicker of the two cars, as the V8 of Lee Shepard, a very heavy car, he'll get the head start over the Pinto. Good starts in both lanes. Bruce Sizemore just nipping Lee Shepard at the finish, 9.74 to a losing 10.41 seconds. Here now comes competition eliminator. And it seems both cars want to run the same lane. And it's Richard Rosen backing up. He's from New Orleans, Louisiana. He's backing up to go on the other lane. Here's Mark Prudhomme, the cousin of Don the Snake Prudhomme. He hails from Bakersfield, California. Two A Econorails, there'll be no handicap in this run as the tree will count down side by side, both cars of the same class, a Econorail, one of the less expensive categories to compete in championship drag racing. Both cars utilizing one four barrel carburetor and an automatic transmission as they're now on the line in a heads up run for competition eliminator. It's Richard Rosen easily outdistancing Mark Prudhomme, 8.18 seconds. We'll be back with more finals in a moment. What a matchup in the finals of Pro Comp Eliminator. Dale Armstrong driving the alcoholic, two-time national champion. He is matched up against a former teammate, Ken Vini. Vini formerly from California, now living in Wadsworth, Ohio, Armstrong from Torrance, California. Both cars, the double B funny car class, that means they're running on alcohol, methanol, rather than the nitromethane used by the cars competing in funny car eliminator. Elapsed times, Dale Armstrong's got the quickest thus far at a 6.55 seconds, the quickest for Ken Vini, a tenth of a second slower at 6.65. It's anybody's race here in the finals, Dale Armstrong, two-time national champion, at the wheel of the alcoholic, matched up against this man, Ken Vini from Wadsworth, Ohio. This is the finals of Pro Comp Eliminator. It'll be Armstrong in the far lane, Vini in the near lane. The tree will count down with one amber light and then green. It's heads up racing between the two double B funny cars in the finals of Pro Comp Eliminator. Vini, knowing he's the slower of the two cars, took a chance on the Christmas tree and lost. The gamble didn't pay off as Dale Armstrong is your world champion, 6.60 seconds. One of the nine categories of competition at the World Finals, fuel motorcycle. T.C. Christensen of Kenosha, Wisconsin in the far lane. On the tower side, the grandfather, Joe Smith from West Covina, California. Christensen on a Norton, Harley Davidson powering the motorcycle of Joe Smith. And a tremendous launch by Christensen. Seven point nine five seconds. 
five categories of sportsman competition. Battled it out here at the 76 Gator Nationals, and we start with Stock Eliminator. In the near lane, driving the 74 Pinto, Tom Ryder of Trenton, Michigan. He is against the 71 Pontiac Le Mans of Rock Running from Lapeer, Michigan. Sportsman category racing in four of the five categories is handicap racing, where one car gets a physical head start. Here, the Pinto of Tom Ryder has the big lead by virtue of the handicap, and he holds on to the win at 15.63 seconds. Stock eliminator, basically as it is described, mostly stock type cars with very few allowable modifications. The next step up the ladder is super stock. That's what's running now. In the near lane, Anthony Sierra from Plainfield, New Jersey, getting an automatic win in his 66 Chevelle wagon as John Ligenfelder red lighting away his chance for the win. Sierra turning a 12-12 the last time. 109 miles an hour. Ligenfelder, though he got to the finish line first, left a red light at the starting line. That an automatic disqualification for John Ligenfelder. Here in slow motion, you can see lane on the left-hand side of the track. The red light comes on. Ligenfelder with the loss. The next class in sportsman category racing is modified eliminator. Here is Pete Smith. From South Houston, Texas, he drives a 69 Chevy 2. His competition in the near lane, 66 Chevy 2, is Cotton Perry from Ringgold, Georgia. Again, watch the Christmas tree and the staggered start where the light, the green light comes on for one lane before it does for the other. And another red light start. This time it is Pete Smith from Houston, Cotton Perry taking the win. Perry getting there first at 10.70 seconds at 125 miles an hour. And that, by the way, is a six-cylinder powered car. Competition eliminator, the next step up the ladder, and quite a variety of race cars. Dragsters, altered cars. This is the A Econorail dragster. It uses an automatic transmission and one four-barrel carburetor from Santa Ana, California, Doug Dye. His competition car is a D Alter. That is the class it runs in. Basically a 74 Vega with quite a few modifications to it. The Martin Brothers from Baytown, Texas. Raymond Martin doing the driving. Again, a handicap start where one car will leave first. That will be Raymond Martin. Let's watch. The Christmas tree begins the countdown for Martin and then for Dye. A big head start for Raymond Martin, but now the dragster starts to come on. It's very, very close, and at the finish line, it's Doug Dye there first with an 8.12 second elapsed time. This is worth taking a look at again in slow motion, and here we see Raymond Martin with his big lead. Here comes Doug Dye catching up just at the first timing light and crossing the finish line just a wheel length ahead of Raymond Martin. The top of the category in sportsman racing is Pro Comp. It is a one amber, a heads up race. This is Ken Beeney in the far lane with a funny car from Wadsworth, Ohio. His competition, Bill Wallace, who had some problems. He was driving the dragster. Ken Beeney, your pro comp winner. Quick look at the finals and the other categories of the drag racing competition. Those contestants. You know, with all the exotic cars that run in a championship drag race, the top fuel dragster is 2,000 horsepower, the funny cars and their exotic aspects. You like to get down to where John Q. Public can really identify with a car. You're looking at super stock class right now. These are the kind of cars that, for all the world, you could have sitting in your driveway. Now, they may look that way. That's not really true. They are modified a bit. But you'll see station wagons, and you'll see 55 Chevys out of an era of nostalgia. You'll see the Camaros. You'll see some Fords. You'll see the kinds of things that you and I can look at and say, hey, I could climb behind that wheel. We talked to some of the drivers who run the super stock class and tried to find out with all the exotic classes of drag racing machines, why do you run this particular class? The only thing I'm here for is to try to, with, with the limitations that they put on me, to try to make more horsepower than somebody else can and, and to come up with a better ET slip. Well, we prefer to run the stock bodied cars. They're a little cheaper to maintain and uh, we've been running them for probably about six or seven years and we're a lot more familiar with them. Some of the bigger guys really have to put like twenty to thirty thousand dollars in them, and we can build these for about ten thousand dollars and be competitive. The guy that owns the car is a millionaire, and he could run any kind kind of car he wants. It's 
I picked it. Now, you say he's a millionaire. He could run any kind of car he wanted. How'd you talk to him in the super stock? Well, that's just my preference, and he goes along with what I want to do. With the money I have available to me and the time and everything, I figure I can have probably one of the best super stock cars. I don't feel I could have the best top fueler or pro car or something along those lines. A total of eight eliminator categories here at the 12th annual NHRA Spring Nationals. We've seen the three professional categories in early round eliminations, top fuel, funny car, and pro stock. The five sportsman categories start off with stock eliminator, and here we see the final run of stock eliminator. Buck Jednak of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, driving a 74 Oldsmobile, is matched up on the near side Al Provost. You see him leaving first in handicap eliminator racing. Four of the five sportsman categories utilizing the handicap start where different types and different classes of cars can run against each other. And it's Buck Jednak through the quarter mile first to take the stock eliminator title in his Oldsmobile, 12.86 seconds at 103 miles an hour. Jednak previously in 1976 has won the Cajun Nationals title. Stepping up the line one from stock eliminator is super stock. There are more allowable modifications to the cars, similar to those cars that you saw Frank talking with their owners and drivers just a few moments ago. Here is Bunny Ingersoll in his Oldsmobile in the Pontiac station wagon from West Helena, Arkansas, Jack Mullins. Mullins is the defending champion here at the Spring Nationals, previously winning the Sports Nationals this year. Buddy Ingersoll, the Cajun Nationals super stock champion. Let's take a look at the Christmas tree and you'll see the handicap start coming down first for Jack Mullins, then Buddy Ingersoll. Mullins leaving first, and there goes Ingersoll in pursuit. Something wrong with Mullins' car. You saw it dart towards the center line. Very unusual for that big station wagon because it normally goes straight and true and obviously some problems as Buddy Ingersoll takes an easy win. 11.63 second elapsed time and here in slow motion you see the driving job done by Jack Mullins from West Helena, Arkansas keeping that big station wagon under control. Buddy Ingersoll, your 1976 Superstock champion at the Spring Nationals. Moving up one from Superstock Eliminator comes Modified. Again, more modifications to basically a stock bodied car. This is Dempsey Hardy. Driving a Camaro in a class that is limited to one four-barrel carburetor, while his competition, a Ford Pinto. Bruce Sizemore, the reigning world champion. The unusual point about the Ford Pinto from Northville, Michigan, is it is powered by a six-cylinder Ford engine. A Chevy V8 nestling under the hood of that Camaro of Dempsey Hardy from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Hardy with the head start. And here comes Sizemore in hot pursuit. Hardy also having a bit of a driving job as his car tends to drift towards the center line. And Sizemore comes past him just before the lights. At the finish line, it is Bruce Sizemore, your modified eliminator champion. He is the reigning world champ. Bruce Sizemore out of Northville, Michigan. And Dempsey Hardy doing a fine driving job in that Camaro. Talk about sportsmanship. This man had a flat tire in the staging lane. That's Scott Shafiroff from Syosset, New York. His competition doing a tremendous wheel stand on the burnout is Wally Jacobson of Elk Grove, Illinois. Jacobson sat patiently and waited while Shafiroff changed the tire to allow him to run in the finals. The head start will be going to the altered Camaro of Jacobson, close behind the altered Ford Mustang of Scott Shafiroff. And just holding on for the win, the first time ever in the winner's circle at an NHRA national event, Wally Jacobson leaving the line with the wheels in the air in that Camaro. His elapsed time, 9.85 seconds at 137 miles an hour. Shafiroff went 9.25 at 148, but remember, it was a head start for Wally Jacobson. Pro Comp, the top of the line, a heads up start, no handicap here. These are two alcohol burning funny cars, very similar to their nitro burning brothers that we've seen earlier. Ken Vini in the far lane, Kevin Siebert in the tower lane. Vini's supercharger whistling through the quarter mile, picking up his third win of the year is Ken Vini, 
Actually, his fourth, he won the Winter Nationals, the Gator Nationals, and the Cajun Nationals, and now the Spring Nationals champion, Ken Vini. Here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. A thousand cars and more in the pit area, and there's been some exciting action throughout the meet here. The Fuel Bikes, an interesting category. T.C. Christensen of Kenosha, Wisconsin, aboard a Norton. Took on Joe Smith of California, astride a Harley, but Smith fouled, and Christensen was the winner. In the modified category, Don Cruz Jr. of Cayuga, Indiana, was against Jerry Ald of Dayton, Ohio. Ald had his problem. Blew his engine and crossed the line into the other lane, giving the victory to Coons. In blowing his engine, he spilled oil on both lanes, and that affects lane choice. In Superstock, Dave Burton took on Don Bowl. It was a real close and all the way. So close, in fact, the electric eye had to tell us who the winner was. It was Burtman in the far lane in the 71 Dodge Challenger. In the pro comp category, Dale Armstrong of Torrance, California, went against Dave Settles over from Lewis, Texas. Armstrong fouled, giving the win to Settles. 7.14. Frank, very good to see Jackie at the Big O. In addition to the three professional categories that we're following here today at the World Finals, there are five sportsman categories in competition for World Championship honors. Our coverage of them starts with the final of Stock Eliminator in the far lane in the Ford Mustang, Scott Main of Aurora, Colorado. And also from Aurora, Colorado, is Ron Peters in the near lane in a 75 Dodge. This is handicap racing between cars that are basically stock. Some allowable modifications. One car will get a physical head start over the other, as determined by the NHRA index. And you can see it as the Christmas tree begins to count down. Ron Peters leaves first, and then comes Scott Main. One thing about it, though, you cannot run quicker than your index or you can lose the race, even though you get to the finish line first. And it is Ron Peters getting there first, but we told you about the possibility of a breakout, and it happened. Ron Peters turned a 12.64 second elapsed time. His index, which figured his handicap, 12.68. So the winner of Stock Eliminator, Scott Main, with an 11.67 elapsed time for his Ford Mustang at 116 miles an hour. The next step up comes Super Stock Eliminator. And here out of the Southwest is Robert Hutchinson from Arlington, Texas, driving his 55 Chevrolet. His competition from West Helena, Arkansas, a 63 Pontiac station wagon, is Jack Mullins. All types of cars in competition in stock and super stock here at the World Finals. Hutchinson gets a head start and something wrong with Jack Mullins' car. as Robert Hutchison has an easy time winning the world championship in Super Stock Eliminator. Hutchison recording a 13.45 second elapsed time at only 66 miles an hour. The next step up the ladder, modified eliminator. Here's Larry Kopp from Baltimore, Maryland. Running against him is Tony Christian from Arlington Heights, Illinois, a pair of Corvettes. The head start to Larry Kopp. The front wheels just bouncing off the ground as the gear changes are made. And your modified Eliminator World Champion, Larry Kopp, 10.84 seconds. His speed, 106 miles an hour as he annexes the modified Eliminator crown. Watching again in slow motion, you can see the cars, the front wheels dancing off the pavement as each of the drivers changes the gears heading down that 1,320-foot-long racing surface. Larry Kopp from Baltimore, Maryland, modified world champion. Here is Competition Eliminator, a widespread potpourri of race cars, dragsters, full-bodied cars, some with superchargers, some running carburetors or injectors. Here's Tony Christian, Wally Jacobson doing the driving, in the near lane, Dean Thompson's dragster from Harvey, Louisiana, driven by Wayne Clapp. A tremendous head start here for Wally Jacobson, and here comes the dragster. He didn't quite catch him, but let's check the times. Again on the index, and he ran too quick. Wally Jacobson running too quick. The win going to Wayne Clapp. A tremendous driving job for Clapp. His index, 8.05 for that B dragster. 
and Wayne Clapp running an exact 8.05. Wally Jacobson, in fact, only six thousandths of a second too quick. The top of the line in Sportsman Racing Pro Comp Eliminator. Here are two dragsters, very much like their top fuel brothers, except they run on alcohol instead of nitromethane. Brent Bramley from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. His competition hails from Bakersfield, California. Doug Kerhulis with the Chevrolet powered car. A pro start, one amber light, then green. Heads up racing all the way to the finish line. Something breaking on Doug Kerhulis's car, something breaking for Brent Bramley. But Bramley able to coast through the quarter mile. And with that takes home to Calgary, Alberta, Canada, the 1976 World Champion Honors in Pro Comp Eliminator. Joining me here today at National Trail in the Spring Nationals is one of drag racing's best known personalities, Steve Evans. David, it's great to be back in the lush green countryside of central Ohio. Today's action is going to include the Pro Comp category. It's the newest in the NHRA lineup the only one of the sportsman categories that races on a heads-up basis. Tremendously popular with the racers and the fans because of the variety, all heads up. Here you see a dragster, a front engine machine. There's no supercharger, so it's allowed to use the potent nitromethane fuel. Only without a supercharger or a blower can you use nitro in pro comp. Moving along to a supercharged dragster, the class officially called AA alcohol dragster. The racers like to call them AA bads. It's a supercharged motor, but limited to straight alcohol in the fuel tank, no nitro. They use an extra gear in the transmission to make up for the lack of raw horsepower without the nitromethane. This same type of motor, as we see in the AA Bad Dragster, also in this funny car. Virtually identical, same transmission setup, alcohol again in the tank, but the funny car is allowed to weigh a little less. And the fans really love it when the alcohol dragsters and the alcohol funny cars meet each other on the starting line, heads up in pro comp. Let's meet some of the guys that drive these cars. Dale Armstrong, Torrance, California. Always the man to beat. Has won the category in every class imaginable. Two-time U.S. Nationals champion, 76 world champion. I'm Tom Ridings from Long Beach, California. A 22-year-old student, Ridings is a protege of Dale Armstrong. Only racing a year and a half, qualifying number one is the achievement of his career. Don Gerardo, Monroeville, Indiana. 1974 produced a competition eliminator U.S. Nationals title for Gerardo. He stepped up in 75 to the World Championship in ProCom. My name's Simon Menzies, and I'm from Torrance, California. Simon began his career as a car owner for Dale Armstrong, later took to the cockpit, and with this brand new Corvette, is looking for his first national title. We'll see those drivers and more in action when we come back. Let's kick off the action of this 13th annual NHRA Spring Nationals with the first round of Pro Comp Eliminator. The first pair of cars we see, that classic struggle between funny car and dragster, both of them utilizing methanol for fuel, supercharged engines. It's Joe Amato in the funny car from Old Forge, Pennsylvania, and Dale Armstrong from Torrance, California. Leaving the line together, Armstrong beginning to pull a bit of a lead. And crowd favorite Dale Armstrong taking a big win in the first round. The time for Dale Armstrong, 6.87 seconds. As we watch in slow motion, you see Joe Amato starting to drift around on the track. That causing just enough of a delay in his time to allow Dale Armstrong to pull about a one to two car length lead at the finish and take the win at a speed of over 202 miles an hour. Joe Amato holding top speed of the meet at over 209 and qualifying, going out in the first round to Dale Armstrong. Another matchup of Dragster versus Funny Car. Here's the low qualifier, Tom Ridings. He's from Long Beach, California, from Granby, Connecticut, with the front engine Dragster. One of the few in competition today is Dale Hall. A great start for Dale Hall, and this is a close race. And Dale Hall takes the win, upsetting the low qualifier. Hall with his small block Chevrolet powered front engine alcohol burning dragster. You see it right there, just a bit of a head start at the starting line, and that's enough to give him the win. 
the times for Dale Hall, 6.91 seconds elapsed time. Here at the finish line, you'll see what difference it makes. As they come to the finish line, Dale Hall just a wheel length ahead. Tom Ridings a quicker time at 6.83 seconds. Hall getting out of his fire suit, awaiting the word from his crew to determine who won the race. Dale Hall from Granby, Connecticut. The next pair of cars, the world champion from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, Brent Bramley in the dragster, Simon Menzies in the Corvette funny car. The horsepower of Simon Menzies pulling out the win. 6.83 seconds, his speed 198 miles an hour. You see he had Brent Bramley, the world champion, defeated by a little over a car length at the finish line. In this pair, two funny cars, Williams and Bowl, J. Marlis Williams from Chelsea, Michigan, against London, Ontario, Canada's Frank Hawley and the Hawley family. Side by side, two of the finest funny cars in pro comp streak to the finish line. And it is Frank Hawley, the Canadian, 6.84 seconds, 200 miles an hour. He had a big lead over J. Marlis Williams at the finish line. The only altered in competition in pro comp eliminator here at the Spring Nationals, driven by Ron Bogg, hometown boy from Columbus, Ohio. His competition, Don Woosley from Winchester, Kentucky. Woosley, a former sports nationals champion. Boggs aiming for his first national event title with that short wheelbase roadster and really a crowd favorite here at the Spring Nationals. with a big victory in round number one, 6.73 second elapsed time. That's the low ET of the first round of eliminations, and you can see him just pulling away from Don Woosley. Boggs recording 201 miles an hour at the finish line. Dennis Forcelli from Minneapolis, Minnesota, driving his double-A dragster on alcohol against the funny car, Dick Titsworth from Sylvania, Ohio, also supercharged, running methanol for fuel. Both cars inching into the staging beams, getting ready for that head start. Side by side, they leave the line together. And at the finish line, a tremendous race as Dick Titsworth takes the win, 6.82 seconds to a losing 6.89 seconds for Forcelli. Here you can see in stop action how close it was, just a few inches separating the two cars as Dick Titsworth advances into round two. This is Terry Yates from Rochester, Indiana, doing his burnout. All these cars in competition doing burnouts. He's matched against the funny car of Don Gerardo out of Monroeville, Indiana. In slow motion, we'll watch the alcohol-burning dragster do the burnout. You can see the tires grow in height as the centrifugal force spins them out and the smoke coming off them as the rubber begins to burn and get hot, providing the traction necessary to put these cars through a quarter mile at over 200 miles an hour. Yates and Gerardo side by side at mid-course. Gerardo pulling out the win at the finish line. 6.80 seconds elapsed time. His speed a whopping 206 miles an hour for Don Gerardo of Monroeville, Indiana. The final pair in round number one, Butch Osmond out of Levittsburg, Ohio, is matched against Robert Gottschalk from Toledo, Ohio. Here you can see both drivers pulling their mounts into the staging beams. Three will go green, they'll leave the line together. Let's watch. At the finish line, Butch Osmond from Levittsburg, Ohio, taking the win, 6.89 seconds. His speed, 197 miles an hour. And Robert Gottschalk trailing by about two car lengths. In slow motion, you can see how close the racing is as they leave the starting line together. 
And actually, most of the race is not decided until past the midway point here at the Spring Nationals. Eliminator. Steve has one of those cars right now. Competition Eliminator is the fastest of all the handicapped sportsman categories. You'll be seeing dragsters only on gasoline and non-supercharged, the new Econo funny cars and dragsters, and maybe even a neat little altered roadster like this one. Competition Eliminator. Let's meet some of the guys that drive these cars. I'm Dennis Ferrer from Comac, New York. Dennis rolled into Gainesville, Florida in March and won the Gator Nationals. Then it was Bowling Green. He won the Sports Nationals. His third national event could be this weekend here. Wayne Clapp, New Orleans, Louisiana. The only comp driver to make his living racing, he was the world champ in 76 and has already won the Cajun Nationals this year. I'm Don Carlton. I have a Lenore address in North Carolina. I live in Hudson, North Carolina. With six national titles already under his belt, including last year's U.S. Nationals in Indianapolis, professional test driver Don Carlton may be the man to beat. My name is Kenny Van Streeter, and I'm from Defiance, Ohio. Kenny Van Streeter is one of the toughest guys in the tough B. Econo Dragster class. He proved that with a runner-up finish at the Gator Nationals this year. We've talked about the cars. Now we've seen some of the drivers. Let's ride with them as Competition Eliminator gets underway. Picking up action in the quarterfinal round of Competition Eliminator, it's one of those dragster versus full-bodied cars that has become so popular in handicap-style racing in Competition Eliminator. John Ligenfelder with a Chevy Monza against Kenny Van Streeter, and a red light for Ligenfelder gives the win automatically to Van Streeter. Ligenfelder's Econo Altered records a 9.82 seconds, while Van Streeter's Econo Dragster, 8.27 seconds, his speed 166 miles an hour. Car powered by a Chevrolet engine, utilizing one four-barrel carburetor and an automatic transmission. In slow motion, you see John Ligenfelder red-lighting away his chance to extend his lead in the Grace Performance Cup Series, that $40,000 season-end bonus fund presented by the W.R. Grace Company. The six-cylinder roadster of Joe Williamson from Louisville, Kentucky. Williamson, a 33-year-old pipe fitter during the week, a drag racer on the weekend, against a full-time racer, Wayne Clapp from New Orleans, Louisiana. Clapp's car, a B dragster utilizing a Ford engine. Well, that's a Ford six-cylinder for Joe Williamson. Here's Joe watching the lights. Williamson off with a head start. Can he hold off the dragster? A crowd favorite, that six-cylinder roadster of Joe Williamson records an 8.87 second elapsed time. His speed, 149 miles an hour as he defeated Wayne Clapp by about two car lengths at the finish line. Here in slow motion, you can see Clapp and the dragster trying to come from behind, but not enough horsepower, eight seconds flat at 170 miles an hour, the losing time for Wayne Clapp. Joe Williamson advancing into the next round of competition eliminator. Don Carlton, a stretched wheelbase Dodge Colt, running as a B altered. The competition, a Chevy Camaro. This is the car of Dennis Ferrara from Comic New York. It is a B Econo altered, utilizing one four barrel carburetor on the Chevy engine, two big four barrels on the Dodge Hemi for Don Carlton. A close race. Let's see if Carlton can come from behind. And he does it, just pulling it out at the finish line. Don Carlton, 8.46 seconds, his speed, 158 miles an hour, and that's a gasoline-burning, full-fendered car, the B-altered Dodge Colt of Don Carlton. In slow motion, you can see Carlton just ever so slightly starting to pull up on Dennis Ferrara as they enter the speed trap. They're about even, and just about a wheel length lead for Don Carlton at the finish. Dennis Ferrara's losing time, a 9.59 at 141 miles an hour. This will be a heads-up start. Two C Econo dragsters. Jim Jones from Indianapolis, Indiana. The front engine car is Jim Head. 
Both cars utilizing small block Chevrolet engines, very similar in engine design, different though in chassis design. The rear engine car seen here is Jim Jones out of Indianapolis. And a red light start for Jim Head, a tough break for the Sunbury, Ohio based driver. As his head start paid off at the finish line, but he had lost the race at the starting line. At 145 miles per hour. In the drag racing is the most innovative of all motorsports. The best engineered award presented at these NHRA national events is really a treasured thing for the racers. There's over 600 cars in this incredibly huge pit area. The choice is a most difficult one. Any category of car is eligible, certainly for the best engineered award. It's based more on caliber of craftsmanship and innovation as we discussed. The people at Fram have selected for the best engineered award at this 13th annual Spring Nationals, the 77 Plymouth Arrow of Butch Leal, the California Flash, as he calls himself, from Northridge, California. We've seen the upsets in Pro Comp Eliminator. Here we are at the semifinals, and we have Dale Hall, the man with the small block Chevrolet front engine dragster, matched up against the funny car of Dick Titsworth. On the other side of the bracket, Simon Menzies driving Jim Jackson's funny car against the altered of Ron Boggs. Pro Comp Racing designed to allow different types of cars and engine combinations to compete heads up against one another. And it's depicted no better than it has been here at the Spring Nationals. 39-year-old Dick Titsworth, a machinist by trade during the week, drag racer on the weekend, against Dale Hall, Hall driving the front-engine Chevy Dragster. A great race at the finish as Dale Hall pulls it out in the last few feet. The crew heading down to get the car, head back to the pits, get it ready for the finals. Dale Hall from Granby, Connecticut, making it into the finals in Pro Comp Eliminator. You see right here, he begins to deviate from the straight and true path down the quarter mile, but gets it back under control and pulls the win out in just the last few feet. The crowd favorite in the far lane has got to be that 1923 Model T Roadster bodied altered car. Ron Boggs driving it. His competition is Jim Jackson's Corvette. Simon Menzies drifting close to the center line has to back out of it. Ron Boggs on an easy single moves in to face Dale Hall in the finals a fine 6.79 second 200 mile an hour run. Ready now for semi-final action in competition eliminator. A battle of the alters. The stretched wheelbase Dodge of Don Carlton against that six cylinder roadster of Joe Williamson. In the other half of the bracket, it's a pair of Econorails, Jim Jones against Kenny Van Streeter. In modified eliminator, the crowd favorite, that little turbocharged Ford Pinto of Buddy Ingersoll, is up against the big Chevy Monza of Sam Janino. Paul McCure driving that Chevy Corvette, he faces defending modified champ Wally Jacobson. Four cars remaining in Modified Eliminator. Buddy Ingersoll, that's the Pinto with a turbocharged engine. Sam Giannino was to have given a big head start to Ingersoll, but could not wait, red lighting away his chance to move into the finals. So Buddy Ingersoll, having been plagued with breakage with this car for practically an entire year, takes the win and moves into the finals. His competitor will come from this matchup. Defending champion Wally Jacobson in the Chevy Vega on the near side. Paul McCure driving David Searle's Corvette. Fayetteville, North Carolina, in the far lane of the racetrack. McCure out first. Wally Jacobson will have to catch up if he can. And he does not as Paul McCure, 10.26 seconds elapsed time, his speed 132 miles an hour, moves into the finals to face the favorite, Buddy Ingersoll. In slow motion, you can see Wally Jacobson trying to make a move with the Chevy Vega, unable to do so as the head start of Paul McCure, enough to carry him to the win. Don Carlton, another North Carolina entrant here at the Spring National. The six-cylinder roadster, this is Joe Williamson, Pipe fitter from Louisville, Kentucky. Williamson out first. Carlton once again in the catch-up role. And catch-up he does by about a car length. Don Carlton in competition eliminator. 8.45 seconds. His speed 157 miles an hour. Putting that Dodge Colt into the finals. 
You can see right here as they enter into the speed traps, Carlton pulling away to the lead and the victory over Joe Williamson. A pair of the Conorails, Kenny Van Streeter in the B category, Jim Jones with a C Conorail, meaning he will get just a slight head start over Van Streeter. Leaving the line on the green light, Jim Jones has got the big lead at mid-track. Van Streeter unable to catch him. Jim Jones from Indianapolis into the finals, 9.05 seconds. His speed, 146 miles an hour. That one four-barrel carburetor with an automatic transmission. That's one of the restrictions in Econorail racing. Jim Jones with well over a car length lead at the finish line. We'll be back with the finals here at the Spring Nationals in just a moment. HRA Spring Nationals in Superstock, Bob Michael of Mainville, Ohio, made it to the finals for the first time in his drag racing career and came home the winner of this Spring Nationals championship. In Stock Eliminator, Kenneth Kuntz of Wheaton, Maryland, made it to the finals for the second time in his career, having previously won the 1974 NHRA Summer Nationals title. Now back to the track and the finals of Modified Eliminator. 35-year-old race car builder Paul McCure driving for David Searles has his work cut out for him as he is pitted against the favorite Buddy Ingersoll from Ziegler, Illinois. And a red light for Paul McCure giving the win automatically to Buddy Ingersoll. An interesting point, Buddy Ingersoll has had a red light against him in every round of competition today. He turned 10.76 seconds, that turbocharged 72 Pinto going 123 miles an hour at the finish line. The Spring Nationals champion modified eliminator, Buddy Ingersoll. Jim Jones from Indianapolis, Indiana, driving the C Econo Dragster. Lenore, North Carolina's Don Carlton, the Dodge Colt. The head start will be going to Jim Jones got a big lead by virtue of the handicap. Now, can Don Carlton catch him? Let's watch. And Carlton winning Spring Nationals title, 8.52 seconds, his speed 139 miles an hour. In slow motion, you can see Jim Jones with a big head start, but here comes Carlton in that Hemi-powered Dodge Gold. Let's go down to Steve. Don Carlton. Competition Eliminator Champion, the 13th Annual Spring Nationals. Feels good, right? Very good. How many national event victories does this make for you? I think that's seven. You've been plagued with breakage, uh, unreliable equipment. Uh, seems you got it all straightened out. Well, I'm punishing it pretty hard, but it stayed together this time. <laughs> How close was the dragster to you? Uh, I cut a real good light and caught him early. You said you were going to push the light. I pushed it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Don Carlton. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. Dave, back to you. The finals of Pro Comp Eliminator, a front engine dragster, 34-year-old Dale Hall, he runs a machine shop during the week, is against the crowd favorite, and that's this 1923 Model T Roadster driven by Ron Boggs of Columbus, Ohio. Boggs, the hometown favorite, the car alone has made him the crowd favorite. Inching into the staging beams, let's watch. Ron Boggs, the crowd just loving every second of it. Pro Comp Eliminator, 6.77 seconds, 202 miles an hour at the finish line. Dale Hall, a very respectable 6.86 seconds, 203 miles an hour. But right at the start and in the first half of the course, Ron Boggs pulls it out to take Pro Comp Eliminator at the Spring Nationals, his first ever national title. Steve? You won one for the hometown fans and one for the Aldred contingent all over the country. It's going to cheer up every Aldred around to know they can be competitive. Yeah, and for all the people that's helped me for the last 10 years. What are you going to do with the money? You want a lot of money. Uh, put it in the car. Your wife's going to be real happy. I'm not married. You're not <laughs> married? Oh, well, you've got a lot of nice things you can do with that money. Here comes your crew, and they are really happy. you got enough people, you think, on your crew? Yeah, yeah, we kept picking them up as the race went on. <laughs> you got some pretty ladies. You must be a happy bachelor. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll let them congratulate you, and we'll do it one more time. Great job. A very happy man, Ron Boggs.
We'll be right back to the Spring Nationals. Standing Spring Nationals Championships. Steve Evans is down in the pits with some observations. Steve? David? Like yourself, I've had a tremendous day today. I don't know when I had more fun, but the most important thing is the standing room crowd here at National Trail Raceway had an absolute ball. Many of them still milling around in the pit area, getting an autograph, watching the cars being cleaned up and loaded up. Trend set, you bet. In sportsman categories, the racing was never better. The altered winning, uh, that's only been done once before. The little small block Chevrolet getting into the final. These are things that we're going to see reflected all over the country at NHRA sanctioned drag strips. Sportsman racing certainly has never been healthier than it was here at the 13th Annual Spring Nationals. Dave, back to you. Thank you, Steve. You truly do run out of superlatives describing this Spring Nationals event. Let's take a look at Pro Comp. We featured that category. Last year's low qualifier would only have been the third alternate. He would not have even made the show this year. A total of eight eliminator categories up for grabs at the Summer Nationals, and age is no barrier in championship drag racing. 59-year-old Ed Merkel of Winfield, New Jersey, proved that, driving his Mercury Montego into the winner's circle in stock eliminator. The other side of the coin, 22-year-old Herb Cutts of Altoona, Pennsylvania, winning super stock eliminator. Let's take a look now at the action in the modified eliminator finals. A pair of Corvettes coming to the starting line in Modified Eliminator. Paul McCure driving for David Searles of Fayetteville, North Carolina, is matched against the big number one, Larry Kopp from Baltimore, Maryland. Number one indicating, of course, the world champion in Modified Eliminator. The Christmas tree counting down and a red light start for Paul McCure, giving the win automatically to Larry Kopp. In NHRA Championship Drag Racing, there are four handicap Eliminator categories. Stock, Super Stock, Modified, and Competition Eliminator. In these four categories, one car actually gets a physical head start over the other. In slow motion, we'll take a look again at the start of this race, and you'll see the Christmas tree counting down in slow motion. And there's the red light by Paul McCure, circled at the bottom of the screen. Larry Kopp automatically the winner in Modified Eliminator. Competition eliminator, a former pro stock car converted to an economy altered, the Chevy Monza, but now powered by a Ford engine. That's John Lingenfelter from Decatur, Indiana. From Louisville, Kentucky, the six-cylinder Roadster, a 23 Model T body, six-cylinder Ford engine, Joe Williamson. Williamson getting close to the edge of the track is going to have to play catch up here. Can he do it? No, he cannot. John Lingenfelter. Competition Eliminator Champion, a 938-145 mile an hour run. In slow motion, you'll see Joe Williamson trying to make the move on John Lingenfelter, but unable to catch him. A big lead as he crosses the finish line. The leader in the Grace Cup points chase, John Lingenfelter. Pro Comp Eliminator sees a pair of alcohol-burning supercharged dragsters. This is 18-year-old Scott Wenny of Spring City, Pennsylvania. Interesting point here about Scott, he took over the driving chores from his dad, Walt, after Walt won a Gator Nationals Championship. Matched against Scott is Ken Vini, two-time champion at the Summer Nationals. He is, in fact, the defending champion, having won Pro Comp Eliminator here the past two years in a row. They leave the line together. And something going wrong with Scott Winnie's car. It is Ken Beeney, the Ford Power Dragster across the finish line. 676, 201 miles an hour, the winning run. There are five categories of sportsman competition here at the Gator National. Stock Eliminator is ready for the final round. Gary Long from Corona, Michigan, the 29-year-old Long, winner of the Sports National Stock Eliminator title, will be on hand. Diamond P Sports will be covering the Sports Nationals. Jerry Dover, Jr., 16 years old from Houma, Louisiana, started driving at the age of 15. He's been in drag racing now for two years. Stock Eliminator, handicap racing. One car getting the physical head start over the other. The handicap based on the index for each of the respective classes. See Dover, the slower of the two classes, getting the head start. If you run quicker than the index, you can lose, even though you might get there first. And Jerry Dover there first, but the win goes to Gary Long as Jerry Dover, by six thousandths of a second, breaks out, giving the win to Long. 
Here's the final in Superstock Eliminator. Cotton Perry in the far lane from Ringgold, Georgia. Charlie Taylor in the tower lane from Lumberton, North Carolina. Approaching the finish line, it's the same situation here. A close, close race, and Cotton Perry wins the race. 11.52 seconds. His speed, 114 miles an hour. In slow motion, let's watch again. A very slight advantage going to Charlie Taylor. Cotton Perry winning as Taylor breaking out at the finish line. Some $9,000 in cash and awards going to the 30-year-old Cotton Perry. As he wins the race, Charlie Taylor going too quick on the index for his class. This is modified eliminator. Bill Pyle from Clarksboro, New Jersey. In the Chevrolet Camaro, his competition, Ross Gerken out of New York, New York. The head start to file. He leaves the line on time. Notice Gerken. Look at Gerken drift off towards his guardrail, but he brings the Corvette back under control. This is no breakout. And it's Ross Gerken there first. He wins the race. 9.97 seconds, 138 miles an hour, some $9,000. Richer is Ross Gerken as we watch in slow motion. Gherkin driving around Philip Pyle just about at the finish line. One car length victory, $9,000 to Ross Gherkin. The final in competition eliminator, the six-cylinder roadster of Joe Williamson against the dragster of John Lingenfelder. Williamson won this event in 1975. He's going to have to hold on. He did it. Joe Williamson with the win, 8.76 seconds. His speed, 152 miles an hour out of the six-cylinder engine. A little over a half second head start, it appears, going to Williamson. You see in slow motion how close this race is. Right there, less than a half a car length. Joe Williamson winning competition eliminator at $8,500. This now the final at the top of the line in the sportsman category racing. Bogey Kell, the wheel of the supercharged Donovan Power dragster running on alcohol. In the far lane, Dale Hall from Granby, Connecticut. Hall's car powered by a small block Chevrolet. One of the older style dragsters using the front engine position in pro top racing. This is just like the professionals in that it is one ember light, then green. And something going wrong with Dale Hall. Bogey Kell taking the win. The first major event victory for the Atala, Alabama-based driver. 6.93 seconds. His speed, 204 miles an hour. The funny car of Baby Huey. That's Jerry Quinn in the far lane. In the near lane is Ken Beanie. Has a brand new Dodge Challenger debuted at this event. We're back into Pro Comp, where it's one amber light, then green. Heads up racing to the finish line. Jerry Gwynn losing traction momentarily, and that was enough to put him out of the race. Ken Beanie, a fine 6.78 second, 207 mile an hour run to put him into the final. Bill Wallace. Dragster powered by the heavy engine. He's against Kenny Cook, Cook's car using the small block Chevrolet. Both are supercharged, both running on alcohol. The difference here, the extra weight demanded because of the heavy engine for Bill Wallace. Kenny Cook has lower last time of racing today, and Bill Wallace knew it. He gambled on the tree, and a red light for Wallace. 6.79 second, 196 mile an hour run. Cook just a hundredth of a second slower than Ken Vaney. In slow motion, you can see Bill Wallace move just a hair before Kenny Cook, and that was enough to get him the red light. It'll be Cook against Vaney. Here's Steve. Dave, we're taking a moment here to relax with Ken Beanie just prior to the final in pro comp. I don't know how we can relax in all this heat, but we're doing our best. Ken, you come in here with a brand new car. You built the body yourself, I understand, the chassis yourself, a motor full of borrowed parts, and here you are. Got lucky. I don't think so. I, I, I've raced before. I, I had a good pl I, I had a pretty good idea how I wanted to do it again and uh, had a good idea where to start. You know, well, I had done them before. You said you just simply couldn't afford to buy the Cabana, so you had to build them. Well, 
Right. I mean, I didn't have the money to go racing again, and I really like to race, and I like to race funny cars, and uh, the dragster is a little easier to run. Uh, it's easier to race against a dragster, but the dragster, the funny car being more popular, you can you can match race it and make a little money with it that way, too. Well, you've got them shaking their heads again. Ken Beeney going into the Sports the Nationals in Bowling Green, Kentucky. I'm Dave McClellan. In the staging lane, some frantic work going on right now as we're ready for the finals. Here's Steve Evans. Dave, we're going to try to talk to John Lingenfelder, one of our competition eliminator finalists. What are you doing here? Trying to change jets, uh, lean out the carburetor. Our competition is about a tenth faster than we are, and we're trying to make a change to catch up. That was just the question I was going to ask you. Last year you were in a body car. Do you like the dragster better? I remember being a body car, but we got to get kids go faster before we quit. Have you won the Sports Nationals before? No. You have a lot of other titles under your belt. Probably. Just a couple. John Lincoln, good luck. Thank you. Can he do it? Twice in a row. 19 hundredths of a second head start going to Buchanan's Ford Mustang. Leading the line on the green, both cars head towards the finish line. And Buchanan holds on for the win. 11.63 seconds. His speed, 107 miles an hour. And Essie Buchanan, runner-up here a year ago, takes the Stock Eliminator title at the Sports Nationals. 11.41, last time for the delay at 100. Bobby West Warren from Clinton, North Carolina, won the Super Stock title at the inaugural Sports Nationals back in 1974. This is the first time he has been in the finals since the World Finals of 74 and making his eighth appearance in a final round of championship drag racing. Right. Bob Harrison out of Albion, Illinois. Lighting up in the far lane, he gets 69 hundredths of a second head start. It'll be was given to Harrison, disappear by about a wheel length at the finish line. Bobby Warren, some $8,000 richer by winning Superstock Eliminator. The final and modified Eliminator in the near lane is the Corvette from Houston, Texas, driven by Pete Smith. This is the second final round appearance by Smith. He was runner-up at the 76 Gator Nationals. Alongside of him, Cotton Perry. Perry getting a tenth of a second head start. A lot of concentration on Perry's face as he watches intently the Christmas tree and leaves right on time. Side by side, they battle their way down the quarter mile. And for the second event in a row, Cotton Perry wins modified eliminator, extending his lead in the Grace Cup points chase. Cotton Perry by a half a car length wins the race over Pete. Once again, let's go to Steve Evans. Mr. Cotton Perry, Georgia's finest cookie salesman. How many major events is that now this year? Three. <laughs> Been very lucky, very fortunate. The world's greatest crew. <laughs> well, nobody else calls it luck. You were really too excited to even talk uh, before the final yeah, round. Uh, very uptight. This guy was as fast as I was. My car had been responding real well all day. I was really more uptight right here, more pressure than the Cajuns, you know, with two cars in the finals. Well, I don't know why, you know, the further you go, once you get on top, you got nowhere else to go. And, uh, you know, and there's more pressure there. <laughs> Congratulations again. You're just Thank a you super much. driver. Appreciate it. Cotton Perry, Sports Nationals champion. The final of the Sports Nationals in competition eliminator. This is the last of our handicap racing. In the far lane is Bobby Cross, driving the C-class Econo Dragster. In the near lane, John Lingenfelter in the B-class Econo Dragster. 75 hundredths of a second, three quarters of a second head start, going to Bobby Cross. 32-year-old John Lingenfelter, already with five wins to his credit, does not do it here as Bobby Cross takes his first ever national win. 0 seconds, his speed 152 miles an hour. In 
in slow motion, we see Lingenfelter's final charge trying to catch Bobby Cross, but he misses by just a couple of feet. An excited crew for Cross as the finals of competition eliminator are now over. There is one final remaining at the Sports Nationals, and that in Pro Cup. The funny car of Ken Feeney against the dragster of Kenny Cook. And what a story behind this. Ken Feeney, many-time national champion, built himself a new car. He brought it to this Sports Nationals debuted it here in national event competition and is in the finals with a funny car. Kenny Cook in the small block Chevrolet, red lights away his chance, and it is Ken Feeney the winner. Kenny Cook got to the finish line first, but he left the starting line first. In slow motion, you see him leave just a hair ahead of Ken Feeney. The foul start giving the win automatically to Feeney. And what a Cinderella story there is. Ken Feeney from Wadsworth, Ohio, started his racing in a funny car. He's back again, once again, Steve Evans. The homemade car borrowed parts and all. Ken Feeney, as he crawls out from under the body he built, won for the four specials. You didn't know you won, did you? No, I didn't. No, I didn't know I won. I just seen him out there, and I, I had no idea I won. But I'm sure happy. That is, This isn't the way I like to win, but... I accept. I've never won the sports nationals, and I'm sure glad I did. How many national titles now? Uh, including the Cajuns, it'd be nine. Well, your wife, who loves hey. to celebrate so much in the starting line, she was very despondent. She didn't see the red light, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I can't believe it. I mean, I couldn't even believe it. Well, believe it. Congratulations. Well, Ken you, Beatty, our pro cop champ for 78 here at Bowling Green. The racing's over here at the Sports Nationals, but NHRA's technical department says there may be a bigger story yet. We'll be back with that in just a moment. At Fram, we've been Green, Kentucky. This is a rerun of the final round of competition eliminator. If this Bobby Cross in the far lane against John Lingenfelter in the near lane. The race was run, and Bobby Cross was the apparent winner. We'll watch here as he gets the head start. Both are Econo Dragsters. One is a C category car for Bobby Cross, the other a B for John Lingenfelter. There you see Cross crossing the finish line first. But in a post-race teardown and certification by NHRA's technical department, it was discovered that some improper cylinder head modifications had been made. Bobby Cross was disqualified. John Lingenfelter, the winner of competition eliminator at the Sports Nationals. Another eerie sensation for this driver, Dennis Fairman from Houston, Texas. The traction unbelievable at the starting line at Raceway Park. You see right here the entire left rear wheel assembly of Dennis Fairman's Chevy Vega just spun off at the hub. Fairman out of competition at the Summer Nationals. Another sensation that nobody wants to experience, Jay Adams of Washington Cross, Pennsylvania, heads off the track into the guardrail with his Chevy Corvette, the car slamming into the rail, coming back to four wheels, then beginning to tilt on its side, and finally Jay Adams on his head. Steve Evans once again. Well, the good news, Dave, after a spectacular upset is that Jay Adams of Pennsylvania is okay. At least you look okay. Yeah, I'm okay. The bad news is that a very valuable Corvette race car has been completely destroyed. Very valuable and very, very beloved. How will this affect your future racing plans, Jay? It depends on how many people I can, uh, I can rely on to help me put it back together. Well, without a roll bar, I don't think we'd be standing here talking like this. I hope you salvage more than you think you can. Jay Adams is A-OK, -okay, but sure disappointed. National category racing of top fuel, funny car, and pro stock. The Summer Nationals winner's circle greeted for the first time 35-year-old Alan Peters of Stratford, Connecticut, winning stock eliminator. In Superstock, 43-year-old Bobby Warren of Clinton, North Carolina, won his ninth national event title. Modified eliminator saw another first-round winner, 27-year-old Bruce Allen of Lapeer, Michigan. Right now, we're ready for final round racing in competition eliminator. Two Econo Dragsters making it to the finals in competition. This is John Lingenfelter, his competition, Bobby Cross. Lingenfelter's car powered by a somewhat larger engine than his Cross, and in competition eliminator, it's handicap racing, a full Christmas tree of five amber lights, 
Cross because he has got the slower car, according to the NHRA National Index, will receive a physical head start over Lingenfelter. See the Christmas tree, the lights begin to count down. There goes Cross and a red light for Lingenfelter. He just couldn't wait watching his competition disappear down the racetrack. So Bobby Cross wins it, the red light by Lingenfelter putting him out of competition. Bobby Cross, your competition eliminator finalist and titleist here at the Summer Nationals. This is now the top of the line of sportsman category racing, Pro Comp. Here's Dale Hall. Hall's car somewhat unique. It uses a small block Chevrolet engine, supercharged, running on alcohol, but it's a front engine dragster. Back a few years ago, Every dragster in competition was a front engine car. Then in 1971, made successful by Don Garland's, the rear engine design took over, is used in all categories where dragsters are legal. And Dale Hall with a big lead, something going wrong. Hall out of control, almost crosses in front of Dale Armstrong. Hall finally gets it back into his own lane. Something going wrong with the car. Dale Armstrong, the pro comp champion. In instant replay, we see once again the big lead built up by Dale Hall in his small block Chevrolet. Something begins to go wrong. You see the car making a violent move towards the center line. He crosses it. That would have put him out of competition anyway, but Dale Armstrong the winner. Here again, Steve Evans. You said you didn't think they had final rounds with you in it anymore? No, God, I haven't got my first round this year yet. This man has won Pro Comp in every conceivable type car. Funny car, dragster, roadster, you name it. Mr. Pro Comp, Double A Dale Armstrong, and here comes one happy crew. Okay, back to you, David. For 36-year-old Dale Armstrong, his 10th national event victory in Pro Comp racing. In addition to the professional categories being contested here at the U.S. Nationals, we'll be taking a look at the five sportsman categories of competition, starting with Stock Eliminator. Steve Terrence of Bremen, Kentucky in the far lane in his 66 Chevy 2 contested against Don Holden of Lansing, Michigan driving a 76 Oldsmobile. Stock Eliminator is a handicap category whereby the slower car physically gets a head start over the faster. The Oldsmobile station wagon of Holden in hot pursuit of that six-cylinder Chevrolet. Terrence trying to hold on to his handicap start but at the finish line, it is Holden there first for the 13.39 second elapsed time. In super stock eliminator, some modifications allowed to the cars that are not allowed in stock. We see another Chevy 2. This one owned by Stanley White of Lincoln, Nebraska. Going off against Dickie Ogles of Bowling Green, Kentucky. Ogles driving the 69 Camaro. And it's an easy win for Stan White. And an 11.97 second elapsed time, shutting it off early to only 89 miles an hour. Modified Eliminator, one further step up the ladder. Again, handicap racing. Bruce Sizemore gets the advantage and the win as Sam Janino of Royal Oak, Michigan, breaking on the line with his Monza. Sizemore driving a six-cylinder Pinto to a fine 9.76 second elapsed time. His speed, 137 miles an hour. That with a six-cylinder engine. The top of the line of the handicap racing comes in competition eliminator. From Los Angeles, Larry Torres, Opal GT bodied Econo Altered against the Econo Dragster of John Lingenfelter from Decatur, Indiana. And a close race as Lingenfelter wins his second major championship of the year. His time, 7.98 seconds, a speed of 169 miles an hour. In instant replay, we see where Lingenfelter caught Torres right at the start of the speed trap and about three feet, the margin of victory, as John Lingenfelder wins competition eliminator. And finally, this is Procom, heads up racing, supercharged on alcohol, John Samalik won Procom eliminator over Joey Severance. Steve's with John as he got out of his car. The biggest upset of this entire U.S. Nationals event is John Samalik, your first big win. <laughs> uh, you beat the best in the be world. My partner got to be in He kept that motor together for me. Oh, this is the first man. national event win for a small block Chevrolet. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of tries. 
Yeah, we've had five times in the finals with small box. Dale Hall, Kenny Cook is the first one. Five categories of sportsman racing competing during the four days of this Gator Nationals. And as they ran their finals, the sun was slowly setting. In Pro Comp Eliminator, Joe Amato of Old Forge, Pennsylvania, took home some $9,000 as he debuted a new car and won his first ever NHRA national title. Competition Eliminator, 33-year-old John Lingenfelter, winning his ninth national title. In Modified Eliminator, Cotton Perry in the far lane, won as Billy Mansell red-lighted away his chance for the victory. Cotton Perry winning another national event title. And in Superstock Eliminator from Columbus, Ohio, Bob Marshall won his first ever major event title, winning in the process some $8,500. Stock Eliminator in the near lane, Kenneth Coombs. Far lane, Jerry Dover Sr. red lighting away his chance for the win. There they are, the five winners in the Sportsman Eliminator categories at this Gator National. Corporation Selection Committee to pick the best engineered car. But when they saw this beautiful jewel-like Opel GT, their search was over here at the Gator Nationals. It was built by the Wayne County Speed Shop Mike Sullivan in Fairfield, Illinois, and it's just absolutely incredible. It's ultra-light, yet as strong as any car in the racetrack. For maintenance, it just comes apart like a snap-together model. It's absolutely gorgeous, and the Pram Corporation will award its best engineered car trophy to this particular entry. Steve, I thank you, and we'll be seeing the finals in our professional categories in just a moment. Right now, let's take a look at the final race in Stock Eliminator. From Stuttgart, Arkansas, comes the Chevrolet of Dennis Oliver. First time ever in an NHRA national event final competition out of Columbus, Ohio, driving a Buick is Dick Baker. This is handicap racing when one car gets a physical head start. In this case, Oliver gets the head start over Baker. Trying to hold off the charge of the passenger car at the finish line. Can he do it? And Dennis Oliver, your stock eliminator champion at the Cajun Nationals. An instant replay we see from half track on. Oliver with about a two car length lead coming into the speed traps and at the finish line just about a half a car length separating the two. From Memphis, Tennessee, this is Amy Falk. This is only the second race in history that two women have made the finals at the same time. Amy Falk in Superstock Eliminator, driving her Chevy Camaro. Of course, Shirley Maldani in Top Fuel Eliminator. The competition is Sunny Ray, driving one of those Hemi Barracudas. He will be giving away a big head start to Amy Falk. And again, trying to come from behind at the finish line to catch Ms. Falk. Can he do it? Watch the Christmas tree as the countdown begins. You'll see the head start and the green light coming on first for Amy Falk. A good lead by both drivers. At the finish line, it is Sunny Ray, your super stock eliminator. A speed of over 123 miles an hour. He drove around Amy Falk right about here at the first speed light. The next category in our sportsman racing is modified eliminator in a broad cross-section of cars. That's right, you're looking at it. It's a Volkswagen, but very competitive because he's waded through a wide field of cars. Johnny Heffler from Sulphur, Louisiana, going off against Tupelo, Mississippi's Billy Mansell at the wheel of a wheel-standing Corvette. And from behind, he does it. It is Billy Mansell taking his first ever NHRA title over the first time finalist, Johnny Heffler, driving the Volkswagen and very close at the finish line as the V8 Corvette comes from behind to take the win. Competition eliminator, Dick Stanbaugh, driving a stretched wheelbase Chevy Vega. The front wheels have been moved out away from the firewall. The car of Rick DeLisi from Pompano Beach, Florida, is Dempsey Hardy, the driver. The one Waco kid entering two cars in this Cajun Nationals Championship. This one making it to the finals against Stanbaugh. Stanbaugh with a head start. And something breaking in Stanbaugh's Chevy Vega. It is the Monza Dempsey Hardy winning competition eliminator. No competition at the finish line as Dick Stanbaugh breaking halfway through the course. 
And that leads to the top of the line pro comp eliminator. We've looked at Charlie Smith. He's a 34-year-old research technician from Groves, Texas. He is driving a car that a year ago was running with an injected fuel-burning engine, also in the pro comp category, but the car itself dates much further back than that. The front engine design going out several years ago, but Charlie Smith parlaying a lot of luck, a couple of red lights, and a good run in the semifinals to earn his way to meet Wayne Clapp in the sophisticated Ford Dragster. And lots of problems with Charlie Smith. Starter Buster Cats looking at competition director Steve Gibbs. They both say, shut it off, Charlie. Your day is done as oil pouring from the motor on the starting line. The danger just too great for Charlie Smith to let him go. And a tough, tough break as Wayne Clapp driving Dean Thompson's Ford-powered Dragster wins the top of the line in the sportsman category. Pro Comp Eliminator at the Cajun Nationals. And Charlie Smith, his great day in the sun, finally coming to rest here in the darkness of the rain-delayed Cajun Nationals Championship. He'll be heading back to Groves, Texas with some fond memories of this event. We'll be back with the Pro Finals in just a moment. The competition just as close in the five sportsman categories. In stock eliminator, it was Ray Cook in the near lane against Jeff Merkel in the far lane. Stock Eliminator and Super Stock judged on a handicap basis based on indexes for the cars. You cannot run quicker than the index, and that's what happened to Jeff Merkel, giving the win to Ray Cook. In Super Stock Eliminator, George Curitan in the near lane gave away the head start to John Heffernan, but Heffernan also falling victim to the index and breakout rule. The winner in the near lane, George Curitan in Super Stock. The wheel standing Garley Daniels missing a shift into third gear and giving the win to Billy Mansell in the far lane. Competition eliminator for the fourth time in history. One owner had both cars in the final of an eliminator category. Rich DeLisi owned them. In the spectator or far lane is Dennis Ferrara, the winner. Dempsey Hardy, the loser. Pro Comp Eliminator, a heads-up category featuring all types of cars, but two dragsters made it to the finals. Joe Amato, winner of the Gator Nationals with a modern-type car, the rear-engine dragster. Dale Hall from Granby, Connecticut, a former Grand National champion, driving the older-style front-engine dragster with a very small engine, about 350 cubic inches of Chevrolet, almost 500 cubic inches of Hemi, and the late model rear engine dragster, and it's a red light start for Amato, which automatically gives the win to Dale Hall, but Dale gets there first anyway. Amato's wife very disappointed as she saw her husband lose to Dale Hall. The red light at the starting line indicating instant defeat. Watching again, just a few hundredths of a second too quick was Joe Amato. Dale Hall, congratulations, our Pro Comp champion. You knew you were in tough against Amato. He'd been quicker all day. Joe's a tough boy to beat. He's excellent. Good driver and consistent. And I'm so happy I can't believe it. Did you see the red light? No, I didn't. I didn't. I don't think Joe knew the red light came on either because he ran the car all the way through, too. This is only about the third time that a small black Chevrolet has won in a Pro Comp uh, championship. Well, we won one in 74. Some good friends of ours, Smokey yeah. Samlick, won last year, and then we got this one. Well, congratulations. This front-motored car is no dinosaur. Thank you very much. We'll be back with semi-final racing from the Summer Nationals in just a moment. Of a group of people known as sportsman racers, they, like their professional counterparts, have been here for five days, and earlier today, final eliminations were held in their respective categories. In stock eliminator, Bobby Blankenship from Lafayette, Tennessee, defeated John Shea of Dearborn, Michigan, the first U.S. Nationals title for Bobby Blankenship. In super stock eliminator, Don Wolf of Clarksville, Tennessee, took the measure of Bobby Warren, a very unlucky number 13 for Warren. He had won 12 straight in a row before this loss. In modified eliminator in handicap racing, as is sportsman racing, Garley Daniels red lights on the starting line Don Kuntz of Cayuga, Indiana, wins his second U.S. Nationals title in four years as Garley Daniels from Grantsboro, North Carolina, leaves the red light on the starting line. 
And nowhere is Handicap Eliminator better displayed than in Competition Eliminator as Larry Torres with the Opal GT has a big head start over Bobby Cross. Cross trying to catch him before the finish line in one of the closest races of the day. You see the dragster of Cross catch Larry Torres just at the finish line. And this, the final of Pro Stock Motorcycle. In the near lane, Bob Carpenter of Cornwall Heights, Pennsylvania. He has been leading throughout the year as the number one on the shoulder of Terry Vance from Anaheim, California, indicates he is the defending world champion. Side by side racing motorcycles, Pro Stock, just like their four-wheel counterparts, and a whole shot for Terry Vance. Can he make it hold on over the low qualifier, Bob Carpenter? It is Terry Vance in the upset win. And is Vance happy jumping up and down on his motorcycle? He defeats Carpenter a 919 to a 916. In instant replay, we watch it, and it's just a fraction of a second off the line first for Terry Vance, as Bob Carpenter had set low elapsed time of the meet in qualifying at 9.08 seconds. With Terry, here's Steve. Pro Stock Motorcycle champ at the U.S. Nationals, Terry Vance. The number one on his leathers means he was the world champion last year, but it's been tough this year. You finally got it. Oh, man. We've been trying so hard, Steve. You wouldn't believe it. You were shaking your head on the starting line like something was wrong. Well, it's really getting slippery down there. And when I did one across the line, I knew it was going to be, I'd really have to use the clutch. And it just worked out perfect. The top of the line in motorcycle drag racing, the top fuel bikes. Astride the Kawasaki is Roy Frog Thacker from Arlington, Virginia. In the near lane from La Mirada, California, the low qualifier, Jim Bernard. For the first time in history of fuel bike racing at the Nationals, no Harley Davidson there, and a whole shot by Frog Thacker over Jim Bernard. Can Bernard catch him? No, he does not, and what an upset. Frog Thacker wins it, 7.84 seconds at 175 miles an hour. A much quicker 775 at 181 for Jim Bernard. In sportsman drag racing, four-wheel style, Pro Comp Eliminator, that's the top of the line. In the near lane, Billy Williams. He's been running exceptionally strong throughout this entire event, consistent 650 elapsed times. His competition from Prineville, Oregon, is Joey Severin. He's about a tenth of a second off the pace, according to previous elapsed times. This is the finals for the title U.S. Nationals champion. And Billy Williams out first and pulling a big lead in the middle of the course. And at the finish line, not to be headed, is Billy Williams. Williams from Torrance, 6.57 seconds elapsed time. His speed, 209 miles an hour on this alcohol-burning supercharged dragster. This win moves Billy Williams to the number one spot in the Grace Cup points chase. Billy Williams has won four national events now, but the U.S. Nationals has got to be your greatest thrill. Right, it's the best one. I don't even know what to say. You simply overpowered him with those 650s all day. Car ran really well, consistent. It sure did. Were you concerned with Joey? In fact, you built the motor in Joey's car. I was really concerned. <laughs> even borrowed a blower from me today. Okay, just about the richest guy now in pro comp, and it needs to be that way for Billy Williams because he does it for a living. Champion at the U.S. Nationals. Other action, world champs were crowned in the sportsman category. In Stock Eliminator, Ray Cook gave away the head start in this handicap race to the Ford Mustang of Jeff Powers. But halfway down the course, here comes Ray Cook, and the Hillside, New Jersey native takes the Stock Eliminator title. She became the seventh woman ever to win an NHRA national event, and Amy Falk defeated Bob Marshall to win the Super Stock World Champion crown. Amy Falk. It was his fifth trip to the final round, and he finally pulled it out as Garley Daniels Jr. defeated Jim Allen. Daniels, driving the Chevrolet, won the world champion title in Modified Eliminator. In competition, the big head start went to Larry Torres, but the roadster of Robert Newberry came from behind and was first to the finish line for the Competition Eliminator world champion title. In Pro Comp, it was his sixth event win of the season. He is the Grace Cup champion and now the world champion, Billy Williams of Torrance, California, defeating Brian Raber. In Pro Stock Motorcycle, Terry Vance in the near lane going a little bit crooked as Bob Carpenter took that measure to take the win. In Top Fuel Motorcycle, the runner-up at the U.S. Nationals, Jim Bernard, defeated Pee Wee Gleason at the World Finals.